Hey Benefiles, this is at the end with me Shubham from Benefile and we are doing node concept and so this is our first tutorial for our nodes and in this video we'll be covering six nodes clipped together why because they are like really small and simple to understand so uh, let's begin open up a new blend file and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this thing up like that and I'll change this to node editor and yeah make sure you're using cycle render right so uh, with our cube selected press on use nodes and you will see two nodes appear right so we'll be discussing this node and this node that is the material output and diffuse shader right I'm just going to delete them right so how to add those nodes Press Shift A and select from output the material output, and you will get this thing. That's our output. So uh, it has got three inputs, right? So the thing is, this node is named material output, but it takes only in input. Why? Uh, because it actually takes an input that is the output of this node. So you know that's quite a bit confusing. It gives the output of the material. That's why it's named output, not because it takes output. Every node takes output. It gives the output. That's why it's named output. M nodes are named because of what they give. Like input nodes, give inputs, output node, give outputs, diffuse node, give diffuse material. All right. Uh, so the material output, right? So it has got three inputs that is the surface, volume, and displacement. So uh, the surface, it actually takes the output of the materials that are present on the surface so for example there is car material plastic glass cloth all your textures that are present steel metal anything that is that you can see around you and are on the surface of material right so it needs a solid surface to show up your material on uh, the volume node, uh, sorry, the volume input, what it gives is a volume material. So for example, you have the clouds, they don't have a surface, they are completely gaseous state. So those are volume. Also, any kind of liquid will have a bit of volume in it. So it actually makes the surface and volume both. So also we have your smoke simulation, right? Yeah. The smoke is actually completely rendered in volume, right? And now in, for 2.77 onwards, you can even use a GPU to render smoke. That's a good thing. And finally, the displacement. Uh, well, the displacement is very similar to the modifier that you can see over here. Uh, so, the displacement modifier actually requires physical data and then it works with the diffuse shader and gives awesome results. Uh, well, the material output that displacement over there it is actually tries it actually tries to fake the you know, displacement and yeah but it can only give the fake result up to a small limit so if you have an image that has really high levels of bumps then I recommend you use the modifier with the output but if you have simple texture that doesn't have much of a bumpiness like you have a wall texture that can use that displacement on the node so that's displacement right and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the world setting over here yeah I'll just discuss the diffuse in a sec go over here to the world setting and you will see it already has one if it doesn't have you can just press the use node button from there right so with the world setting is the same thing that is over here Boom. so it also has surface and volume output and you can add from the similar place go to output and world output you'll get over there so the surface is what the surface of the world is so let me show you so that white thing in the background that is your world surface of the world right and the volume is actually for rendering foggy scenes well that's that's the world output node and next thing we'll do is going to select the lamp source over there and we'll go back to the object and you will see it has a lamp output it only has one input that is the surface because it gives light out of its surface that's like really really simple thing you want to see that over there. also it has no volume so it cannot do anything of its volume it's just a point 
Now, getting back to your diffuse node, so uh, it has three inputs and gives a BSDF output. Okay, uh, coming back to the diffuse node, uh, it consists of three inputs. Firstly, the color. So uh, it basically slaps in color, any color you choose from here, onto your 3D map. So that's very basic and boring, <laughs> right? And has a roughness value, and that actually does is it gives a subtle rough texture on the surface. So a zero roughness will give you a completely smooth surface, and roughness of one make it slightly roughy. So, yeah, that's not noise, that's roughness. So, uh, basically this roughness is used you know, when you are making material for cloth. They have this subtle texture over there. So, roughness of one gives nice texture for cloth if you want to make. Right. And the normal, uh, that needs a bit of it. Okay, uh, so, uh, for normals, we are going to get back into paint, right? So, uh, in mats, a line that is touching only one point, a line that is touching only one point at a circle is called a tangent, and a line that is at 90 degree, that is perpendicular to that line, is called the normal. So, what normal actually does is it gives a direction, uh, outward or inward direction, that is, you know, giving the direction of the point over there. So in Blender, uh, normals are actually you know, telling the direction these uh, faces are facing at. So for example, if you go to edge mode and if I show you, um, boom, where? Normal. So uh, these small lines, they are actually showing you the direction the face is facing, right? And this actually is used to you know, know which direction the face is facing. The face that are facing upwards can be used to give slight dust upon them. That is the job of normals, right? So that's basically what normals do. Okay, uh, so that's basically diffuse shader. And next, we we'll go to the world. And the background node it consists of two things. That is the color. So that slaps in a simple color to your background. And yeah, the background actually gives. Uh, all around 360 degree lighting and every lighting is like just pink color so you're getting a yellow color from each direction that's why it won't be causing any shadow on the surface right if I change the color back to white. So you can see it actually reflects the color of the background but you cannot create any shadow anywhere so it has a strength and the strength can go from real to Infinity. So a zero means complete black it is not contributing in any way to your lighting, you know, environmental lighting to your scene. And if you go increasing it, you just keep getting brighter and brighter and at a point it will just go white. Whatever your color be, it will just go bright at a point. So that's the background nodes, really, really simple. Next we go to the lamp and the lamp it has an emission it is very similar to the background node it has a color color of the emission uh, wait a sec. okay so i'm just gonna drop this down to point and i'm gonna bring this a bit closer right and so uh the emission node it slaps in basic color of your emission and the strength you know from zero to infinity and gives the strength of the lamp so it's very much less and just increase trend, you will see it is flat, simple color from that point onto your cube. So that's uh, basically these first six nodes, really simple. Play around with them, those are like the most commonly used nodes in every single material. So, till then, uh, I hope you like it. If you have something to say, you can post it down in the comments and subscribe to stay tuned for more tutorials on the nodes. And you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blenderfile. See you in the next video.